Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM and today I want to talk to you about a prevailing myth that came out from a video, or was highlighted to me, from a video I did a few weeks ago when I was talking about how much range you actually need. And then I got a lot of comments, I mean more than I ever expected from people basically saying well if you've got a, a 200 range EV in the real world, like the one I'm sat in right now, then you don't have 200 mile range because you're only meant to use between 20 and 80%. So therefore the range is realistically 120 miles, not 200, at least from flat to full. So therefore you've got to take that into account. Now I know why they're saying that and I know where it's coming from, but ultimately it is not the case. There are certain reasons to not go above 80%, but if you want to, you can. Now let me try and explain what I mean by you can and where this is coming from. So for example, if you're rapid charging a car, so imagine you're going on a long journey and you're stopping off at a service area and using their very fast DC rapid charging where you just want to get going as quickly as possible. It is typically, and it varies from car to car, but it's typically quicker to stop charging around 80, 85% and then carry on your journey and stop again somewhere further down the line, then it is go to, going up to 100%. Because some cars, and again it varies, can take just as long to go from 10 to 80% as they do from 80 to 100%. So effectively, to stay in the fast charging power band, stop at 80 and stop again further on the, uh, the journey or the line or wherever it is you're going. So that's one reason. But most of the people I was sp speaking to in the comments were saying that, well, you've got to keep it between 20 and 80% for the longevity of your battery. When you charge a battery to 100%, completely full, or completely deplete it, so you know it's literally at 0%, then it can reduce the longevity of the battery. And most people will think about the thing in the phone or a double A or something like a power bank and go, well, yeah, these don't last very long. So I'll do everything I can to, uh, to increase that longevity. But with an electric vehicle, it's quite different. One, the batteries are a lot more advanced. Two, they've got battery management systems. And part of that is you can never fully charge an electric vehicle. You can never fully deplete an electric car either because well, again, they're aware of this and they've stopped it from happening. Think of this really badly drawn, not to scale drawing of your car's battery. And I'll use my 30 kilowatt hour Leaf that I used to own as an example, because in this, Nissan were a bit naughty. They state, unlike many other manufacturers, total capacity rather than usable capacity. Because even though it says I have a 30 kilowatt hour battery, I only realistically had about 27 and a half ish because again, all manufacturers do this. There is a buffer at the top and at the bottom of every EV car's battery. That essentially stops you from fully charging it or fully depleting it. So when your car says it's at 100%, I can't charge anymore, I'm stopping, it's not really. It's at, let's say, 96, 97%. And some cars have bigger buffers than others, some are smaller, it does vary. Same if you run out and it says, I'm out, I'm out, I can't drive anymore, I'm stopping. You're not actually at 0% of the actual battery, you're at 0% of the indicated battery size, the usable battery. So they've thought of this. Manufacturers aren't stupid. They warranty, well, any manufacturer warranties their batteries for either seven or eight years, it depends on the manufacturer. They don't want to prematurely replace those batteries at great cost to themselves under warranty. So even though, yes, strictly speaking, Bouncing between 20 and 80% all the time will be the best case scenario for a battery. Bouncing it between the indicated 0 to 100%, it has no warranty effect at all. It's fine for them over seven or eight years to basically use the whole thing. Again, I can't say that it doesn't affect the longevity, but we're not talking like halving the battery life or anything close to that. It's just not quite that extreme. And it's one of those where you have the choice, essentially, of which you want to do. For me, I take the middle ground, the common sense approach of, I will use between 20 to 80% where possible. If I'm doing the Tesla thing, if I'm doing a long trip, 
then I will put it to, up to 100 and I will go all the way down to, well, whatever I'll get down to before I end up charging. I don't want to arrive on 2%, I'd rather arrive on 20, but I would rather get home on 5% than stop just to stop it going below this market. You know, you have to build your, your life into it as well. Even if you wanted to keep the car until it dies, you know, 15, 20 years, whatever. So you want to really eke out the lifespan of this battery. Well, that's fine. But to meet your range requirements, sticking between that, like people said in the previous video, you're gonna need a bigger battery on that car to fulfill whatever the minimum range you need is, which means you have to spend thousands of pounds more on the initial car, all to do this. I would postulate that you'd be better off just buying the car that suits your need and occasionally going to 100% than spending thousands of pounds more now. No manufacturer out there is saying, do not charge above 80%. Certainly, if you actually look at what they're saying, I think a lot of people here are reading the headline without reading the article. So for example, with Tesla, they do it in a, well, they can explain it far better than I. So you can see here, that their daily amount, so if you're going on daily trips, commuting, that sort of stuff, day-to-day -day activities, then charge it between 50 and 90%. If you want to go on a long trip, then, well, just whack it all the way up to 100%. So normally, I'm about here, because that's more than enough for what we need. I have a standard range plus, just to clarify things. But again, if you're going on a long journey, well, use the whole battery, it's not a problem. So let's try and summarize what I'm talking about here. If you can, Keep it between 80% and 20%. It's not a problem if you run it down to 5% or 10% because you want to get home without having to charge. Don't panic that you're thinking, oh, hang on a minute, I'll stop because the car thinks I'm gonna be getting back on 10%, so I'll charge it up so you only get back on 20%. Just do it, it's fine. And when it comes to fully depleting or fully charging, even in EV world, it's when you leave it for any length of time that it becomes more of an issue than just doing it overnight. If I arrive back on 3%, I'm not gonna be bothered because I'm going to get home, plug the car in, and it will start charging either immediately or in a few hours when it gets to its nighttime typical cycle. So if I was going away for several weeks, then yes, absolutely, I would not leave that car on a very low or a very high state of charge. If you're unsure and you think, well, I might be doing one, put it to 100%. Again, the manufacturers aren't saying don't do this. They're saying this is the best thing for you. Like if you had a petrol car, you can use full revs, you can rev it right up to the red line if you want, because it lets you do that. But it doesn't mean it's good for the engine. It won't void your warranty, it won't change anything, but ultimately, if you revved your car to the red line all the time, well then it wouldn't last as long, would it? But you only do that when you want to, or when you need to. So think of it in that way. Yes, you can use the whole battery. Yes, you can drop it down to a low amount. Just don't leave it for long. And ultimately, just treat it like a car. In the first three and a half, four years of uh, ownership, in fact, no, nearly five years of ownership, I had two Nissan Leafs, a 24 and a 30 kilowatt hour version of those cars. Due to the battery size being relatively small compared to today, that got charged to 100% every single night because I needed the full range. And they're fine. I guess it's like vegetables. You should get your five a day or whatever they're recommending right now. But it doesn't mean if you don't eat five a day every day that you're gonna, you know, die years sooner. So, you know, just again, it's the common sense approach. It's a car, use it as such, and just get on with enjoying life. Don't worry about such things. Even iPhones, when you put the battery optimization things, now only charged to is it 80% and then just before, you know, maybe an hour before you're due to normally get up, it will do the rest, it will charge to 100, 100%. And that's because they're not worried so much about charging to 100, they just don't want to leave it at 100% for as long as possible. It's one of those misinformation or not great information from dealerships, I think that's causing a lot of this. They'll give you a brochure or they'll, they'll read it themselves. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of great information coming out of a lot of dealerships. Some are very good, don't get me wrong. But ultimately, a lot of people I've talked to who work at a dealership when I've just been an customer, shall we say, you know, oh, tell me about this. They've given me kind of duff information. 
one of them literally said this, actually, if I think back. It's only just come back to me. I don't know why I thought of it, not thought of it before. He said, oh, no, you've got, you got to charge it to 80%. Any more than that, it'll kill the battery. A dealer told me that. No, it won't. We, we need better information around the network. So many people are buying cars and, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't know how to charge them properly because they've not been given anything from the manufacturer, from the dealer, whoever they bought them from, new especially. So they're just like, well, here you go. Enjoy. So it, maybe, maybe that's what we need to be concentrating on. Rather than getting people getting information from YouTube channels, it should be done at the source. When you buy a car, here's everything you need to know. Right, uh, I'm done, so thanks for watching, guys. Um, any questions, please let me know. What do you do? Do you keep it to 80% like I do? Do you just whack it to 100% all the time? I know people that do that all, you know, in, in any car, all day, every day, and they've had no issues either. If you want to support the channel, then please the, click the subscribe button or really support the channel by clicking the join button. You can't do it on iOS because it's an Apple thing, but effectively, for 99p a month, you can become a member. You get members-only videos occasionally. You get videos on Sunday instead of Friday. And a members-only live stream at the end of every month. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.